Joining us now, former CIA caseworker and member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Democratic Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger of Virginia. So what are the options here in terms of deterrence or prevention at this point? It doesn't feel like there are many. Well, Mika, thank you so much for having me on to discuss this. I serve on the Foreign Affairs Committee. I'm a former CIA case officer. So certainly I have a firsthand experience with the sort of information that flows into these discussions. <clears throat> on Capitol Hill, we've had multiple classified briefings um, for the Foreign Affairs Committee, for the Armed Services Committee to discuss uh, what we're seeing on the ground, what our intelligence officers and diplomats are seeing on the ground, and what options are presented before the president. Um, at this point in time, we are in a, a very challenging uh, time uh, for Ukraine's history, for our history. And certainly what we've seen in the last week is a united front, uh, generally across the board of our Western allies, um, NATO engagement, uh, the, the visit with the Secretary of State Lincoln um, in Germany last week, and, and certainly with uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov. Um, are ongoing indications that we are working furiously. Uh, our members of the State Department are working furiously uh, to work on a diplomatic solution to provide all ramps. Um, but, but certainly, I think that we see that all options are, are certainly on the table for um, engaging to defend the ideals of democracy um, and ensure that that Vladimir Putin's ideals of uh, kind of aggressive um, action to his neighbors are, are not something that. Western nations are going to take lightly or accept. Congresswoman, good morning. It's Jonathan Lemire. As you just said, diplomatic channel still very much open, and that's the preferred solution here. But we know the president uh, is considering sending troops to the region, warships to the region, NATO uh, doing the same. What is your analysis here as this moment in time in terms of whether that could just escalate tensions further uh, with Russia? And do you think the U.S. should respond, even if Russia moves in in what was deemed a, it could be a minor incursion. The president said that last week, later backed off of it. What would be the appropriate response? So I think any incursion into a sovereign country is an incursion. Um, and, and I was happy to see the president back track a bit and clarify that point, and certainly uh, Jen Psaki did the same. Uh, so I think uh, across the board, any incursion into Ukraine by Russian troops, Russian forces, that's an incursion. Um, and, and so looking at what the options are, uh, as we are still working towards deterrence and our diplomats are working strong for a diplomatic solution and off-ramp, um, it is important that the Ukrainians be able to defend themselves. I support uh, providing them with the uh, with the assets necessary to do that. Um, and certainly we have seen the supply, uh, as you mentioned in, in the lead up, of uh, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of uh, military assets to support them. Um, in terms of our own military um, troops, uh, that's another discussion. But but hopefully, uh, we are utilizing every single tool in the toolbox when it comes to sanctions, levying the hardest, swiftest, most aggressive sanctions um, against Russians, Russian oligarchs, certainly uh, members of the Russian government, uh, it, 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 as if there is a, the ratcheting up of tensions as, as we are currently preparing. Yeah, Congresswoman, uh, I want to ask you about a, a bill that uh, you're putting out on the floor about the Trust in Congress Act. Uh, it, it's to stop uh, some of the nonsense that I don't understand uh, that occurs in Congress now. Uh, we certainly saw uh, the consequences of it for people that were briefed on COVID, and uh, a lot of people made a lot of money on it. Uh, with, with information they get from briefings. I never understood it when I was in Congress a, a quarter of a century ago. Why in the world should members of Congress be able to use information that they get to do what, in fact, I consider to be insider training? Trading, it's ridiculous. Shouldn't all members of Congress be banned from trading stocks while they're serving in Congress? Yes, yes, emphatic yes. Uh, and, and what you'll hear people say is, well, we have the Stock Act, uh, which was put in place more than a decade ago. That bans insider trading. And what I will say to that is, we take votes that move markets. We receive briefings that provide us with information, whether it counts as insider trading or not, information that helps define what the market will look like, what tragedies, what positive things, negative things. Certainly in the early days of the pandemic, we were receiving briefings about the potential ramifications of this virus that we 
you know, in, in January, February of 2020, only knew of was sort of percolating and, and, and making people sick in China. And we saw at that time members of the United States House and the United States Senate buying stock in pharmaceutical companies, buying stock in Clorox, buying stock in companies that we would come to realize really did very well um, in the time of a pandemic, making sure that those members of Congress did well at the time. And, and what is, I think, even worse than the fact that we saw those actions happening is that the American public said, yeah, OK, that's what they do. That's what they do. Of course, they're serving their own financial interests. And so what I have said to my colleagues who you know don't see the need for this bill or have come to me and said, I am wholly ethical, I am not corrupt, why are you trying to push this bill? I will say, it doesn't matter what your actions actually are, what your intentions actually are. When the American people are saying that they don't trust members of Congress because they think that we might be putting our own interests before theirs, that is the time for us to take affirmative action. That is the time for us to say, you know what? Here is a way that I can help just a bit, regain the trust of the American people. Members of Congress should not be able to sell or buy or trade individual stocks, nor should their spouses, nor should their dependent children. It's a very straightforward way to ensure that we can take that action to regain a bit of trust and never see another news article about this member of Congress buying this or selling that. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's very straightforward. Whether members consider it to be they, themselves to be ethical or not, uh, they are putting themselves into a, a, a situation where there is an ethical conflict, per se, on its face. If you're a member Sorry. of Congress and you vote on issues that move the economy and you have stocks, it's a conflict of interest. Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. It's the Trust in Congress Act. I hope everybody yeah. watching will call their members of Congress, call the White House and support this Really important legislation. Appreciate you being here and still ahead. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.